Are you ready? Slide my desk up until it's right up against Yuri's and hold my book a little more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. We glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? <laughs> I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air out of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Dizdon started showing up. Oh! Mm. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. Dizdon, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. I can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah. Uh. Without worrying, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. It's just this kind of... that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and you we're all worthless anyway. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Uh, I'm addicted to you. Feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? To have someone who wants to resolve their, revolve their entire life around you? But it feels so good. Then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first. But then the feeling's too strong now. I don't care anymore, Dizdon. I have to tell you, I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Dizdon, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that he... I even touched myself with the pen I stole from you. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. I want you all to myself. And I want to be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, Distan. Tell me you want to be my lover. Tell me, do you accept my confession? <laughs> Ah. 
What the fuck?